guys, welcome to Lee Photographies. I am Lee, also known as Mike with Mike W Productions, if you've uh, been following over there as well. Uh, thank you for coming over here. Today I am showing you guys how to use a film camera. Now this is not your traditional film camera, this is a vintage film camera. This is the old Rolly Flex. It is, let me just double check, a 3.5, um, yeah, 3.5 here. And um, it is a fixed millimeter and um, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you guys some features on this, show you guys um, how it kind of works, what you're going to need, what you're going to need to know. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, old camera, and um, let's see, we have a bunch of buttons that I'm going to kind of go through here for you. The first of which is going to be this guy. Now this camera is empty, so don't worry about it. Let's focus that out. This is a, not so much a button as it is a gear. This is your roller. You put this out and you roll it and then you put it back on. You have your little counter here, which counts your shots. This particular camera sets up for a roll of 12 shots. So you want to kind of make sure that you get the film that shoots as many uh, rolls as your camera will allow okay uh, over here we obviously have your lenses you have a timer you have uh, different light components I usually leave those alone over on this side you have your f-stop uh, meter here which does um, appear on top I think I can show you is it shows how the f-stops turn for you if you guys want to know more about f-stops and apertures and things like that and speeds let me know in the comments and I will try and get that for you um, this over here is your focuser this knob here has a focus and if you see here that sends out the camera in and out and that basically is how you focus it. Now I know what you're asking me. Well, if I can't see anything, how can I focus it? Well, this guy pops up like that and you can see right down in here that there is a focus reflector that goes to this mirror here and this is your aperture mirror, your real mirror that opens up. So you look through here, you look down into this, and you focus it. It is um, backwards uh, compatible. So if you're looking at something and you're thinking, okay, I'm looking at you. If I go this way, oh no, I'm going too far over. And if I go this way, I'm going too far over. So you just kind of have to play it as being backwards. You can focus it like this. You look down here in this little mirror. You can kind of get close and some even have little things that have boxes. There's little boxes that you can get that you can look through here and it'll send it down there so you're not doing this the whole time. Unless you like the lower um, looks on the cameras here, which mm, some people like that, that like chest level or stomach level view. That's up to you to get used to. There is uh, ASA and DIN. Those are, if you can see there, the ASA and DINs, those are basically, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm still kind of new to film, but I believe those are the types of films that you're using. So if you're using, like let's say, um, a aperture a uh, ISO of 300 
Well, there's no 300 on here. There's a 320. If you're using an aperture of 500, there is a 500 on here. You would just basically click these over and say I just changed it to 1300 or 800. In the back, you have um, a little gauge of what kind of film you're using. Kind of tells you what kind of screens you get. Uh, your ASAs, which is your film, and it tells you what uh, kind of stops you're going to get for what you're doing. So that's pretty cool. If you look on here as well, you can see on where it says Germany, there's a little uh, black slash white vertical lines there. And you can actually switch those to coal, uh, which is coal with a little light bulb. Uh, coal with a sundial, uh, coal in, so I think that's uh, color neutral, and then you can just do black and white. You can shoot um, both black and white and color film because the, the machine doesn't actually do the coloring, that's all processing, which I will do uh, black and white in another video for you guys. But I just wanted to show you this little guy first. Now, I know what you're gonna ask next is, how do you get film into this little guy? So let's close this little part up because we don't really need it right now. On the bottom, down here, you have a, a shoe for your tripod. If you want to put your tripod, uh, a, um, your camera on a tripod, there is a little screw down here that you can screw it into and then mount it onto a tripod. So that way you're not just doing this and moving around because I've done this before. You get blurry pictures when you don't have it steady and if your hands are kind of moving around while you're trying to hit the little button, it's gonna screw up your, your whole picture. Now, back here on the front end, you do have a shutter release button. You have an automated shutter release here. If you, this is for like, if you wanna use a uh, button pushing shutter release instead of using the button. This does have a, let me be careful here. It does have a release lock on it. So if you push, you try to push this while this is down, it's not gonna let you do anything. And that will let you do that. Don't worry, there's nothing in this, so it's not gonna hurt the camera. There's no film in here. Anyway, so, um, back to the bottom. Uh, you have, of course, your shoe mount, which is just a little screw in that you can put a shoe for a tripod, which you guys are on right now. And then you have your film lock. So your film lock locks your film container, which I'm gonna show you here, it just, flips over, this flips up, and releases, oh, look at that, releases, I'm gonna turn this over for you guys, releases the bottom. Now you don't usually wanna do this when there is film in here, because you're going to expose your film unless you've hit your 12, you've hit your 12 and you rolled it all up, that will be in a spool up here. There is an empty spool down here because I've used the empty spool. Well, how do you change the film? That's pretty easy. Let's do this. There's a little uh, turner right here. This is just a lock. They don't really turn anything, but there is a lock here and that locks in your old spool into the machine. Now what you can do with this old spool, instead of just throwing it away, you can put it into the top and what do you do with the top how do you get that into the top there is the same little I'll show you here little thing here on the top and the same little button you have little don't know if you can see that t-bars there and there's a little uh, crisscross action there in that bottom piece so you want to get the T-bars set up with that little setup there. And you want to make sure there is a 
kind of a, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a slot there in the middle of the film roll here. And that is where you're going to feed in your stuff. So you're gonna get it in here just like that. You're gonna pull this button, it'll slide down and click, boom. Now you're all set for your reset. So let's do this. I'm gonna put you guys on a lower angle so I don't have to be up here for you guys. And so we will do that here in a second. You have your film spool and your empty spool here. And what will happen is as you crank this up, it turns that crank. So that is what that does and it just cranks it. Again, this button and this little button down here they're just releases for the spools. So you don't really have to worry about that. If you turn these, they don't really do like very much of anything. So don't worry about that at all. So what you wanna do is I usually use, this is not a sponsored video, just so you guys know. I usually use Ilford. This is 120 film. Uh, Ilford usually shows or any kind of thing shows what kind of film it is. It is black and white film. This is uh, HP5 Plus. I have no idea what that means, but this is 120 film. And up here on the top, it tells you what type of film it is. If it's color or black and white, this is black and white. And then ISO, your ISO is kind of important. As I showed you on the side, you can set your ISO up to set it for the film and get your exposures right. So um, it shows ISO of 400, that's the type of film that this is. Um, it also has a uh, apparently a Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and a YouTube, so you guys can go check them out after if you wanna do that. Again, this video is not sponsored, I'm not being paid by them whatsoever. I just found that their film kind of works best for me it does say that you should store uh, it in a cool place, which is about 68 degrees, so a moderately cool place. So indoors, it is in a little seal pack, so that's okay, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna put this little guy in my lap so you guys can see what I am doing here. Comes in a little dark packet, which is great because you don't wanna expose your film and um, yeah, because you're just going to get a white image if you do. So you just tear this little guy off, throw that away, open it up. You just kind of want to be careful. You don't have to be like super careful, but you do want to be quite a bit careful because you are dealing with film and film is persnickety. Throw that over there. Now here is your unexposed film. And this is what the other spool looks like. If you're really lucky, you either have a wooden or a metal one of these. I believe the originals came with a metal spool. But if you just have the one of the plastic ones, don't worry about it. They are reusable, and that's why I just reused this one. It comes with a little piece of tape here, which you can just peel off. And that starts your spooling here. Now you can either use that little piece of tape or you can use this little flap that comes in here as well. So I can take all that tape junk off. You kind of do want to do that because if you're going to develop the film, you don't want any sticky stickies, but it has this nice little curve on here with that black. Now what you want to do is set this up with your camera first before you feed it into anything. So here's a little notch here with this little uh, push plate and your button that's on the side. You're gonna set this up and you wanna set it up where it's going to roll. You don't wanna set it up where it's going to be like this because the, the film needs to be, the black part needs to be this way because if it's this way, you're just going to shoot the back of the film and there's no point in doing that and you're going to just waste a roll. <laughs> so 
make sure you put it in the right way, which is exposed that way. We're gonna put that little guy in here, set her in there. Make sure you kind of get it in there. It does like to be persnickety sometimes. There we go. And then just let that little driver drop. You can be careful and move this. You want to go under this little reel because it tells the camera itself that there is something there. You want to kind of pull it and then put it on this little flap that I was talking about earlier, right? Make sure you get enough reel to really do it. And I'll try and show you here, it's kind of awkward. That little tail can slide right in there. Now you can take your side reel and just kind of roll it nice and easy. And you're gonna keep doing this and see I'm just rolling it. And eventually you're going to see this little black line. When you get to that black line, I would say kind of just stop that moment because you don't really wanna go too much more. You're gonna wanna close this guy up by just pushing down, closing that lock up, and then locking it in place. And now it's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna turn it to its side. And again, as you can see, there's a number here and you're just going to keep reeling it until you get a might take a little bit because sometimes it gets persnickety. Yeah, sometimes it just gets hard to, to roll around here. But eventually, you can see it, it's coming. There we go. Nice little click. Don't, once it hits, you hear a slight little click. I, I know you can hear clicking because these things are moving around. But you'll hear a little click and you'll see number one in the little window stop you can go and put that in there and then you are ready to shoot that means that this button here is activated um you're totally ready to shoot you can set your either timers or whatever it is that you want to do up don't worry about doing anything particular with this button. Um, you can set up your exposures here with the side button. And, um, and right in here is your main lens. And you can see there that you have your little uh, uh, flower which opens up. And this is a 3.5 Rolly Flex medium format film, which is a 120 film, uh, which is me which just means medium format. It's a bigger picture. I kind of explained that into another video. I might do one specifically just on the differences of the film types. But this is a 3.5 uh, f-stop. So. You know, that is what it is. And now you are set up. Again, you can focus in and out. Don't mess with these after after doing that because uh, you don't want to mess with your film, but your film is all set and you are ready to start shooting. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little video. If you guys also are photographers and you've shoot uh, shot with the Rolly Flex, let me know down below. Um, and if you guys know, probably know more than I do about these guys, cause I'm just getting into shooting with these older cameras. Let me know down below if I made a mistake on what the ASA is again, like just again, let me know down below because you may know more than I do, which is honest. All right guys. So I hope you liked that little 
uh, video about the old Rolly Flex. And um, if you guys like this video, you may like my other videos that are to come. I'm gonna hopefully be putting out once a week on this topic of film. I will also be doing digital photography, Photoshop editing, basic computer editing for those of you who cannot afford to get either an older version of Photoshop that doesn't charge you or you can't afford the uh, monthly subscription. With that being said, if you guys want to watch other videos of mine, you can jump over to my other channel, which is Mike W Productions. I usually do TV shows and movie reviews and things of that nature, and I complain about cartoons not being good anymore and TV shows not being good anymore. Or you guys can wait a week and another video on the Rolly Flex will be coming out. So with that being said, thank you guys for showing up and watching this video. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated this video, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit that little subscribe button down there somewhere because, um, you know, that lets you know that, uh, there's another video next week and when that actually comes out and then, um, it actually helps me out too. If you guys want to watch another video, I have a link probably somewhere over here for you guys to click on. You guys can hit one of those buttons and we will see you guys later. Peace.